Hello, my name is Patrick Wilson and I'm a pediatric critical care medicine physician who will be showing you how to set up and apply CPAP. The supplies that you need for setup include the CPAP machine, the power cord for the CPAP machine, the air supply tubing, the oxygen adapters, the CPAP system package which includes the following, inspiratory tubing, expiratory tubing, and the white adapter. You'll need a tape measure or ruler, You'll need a clean bottle. You'll require rubber bands. You'll need clean water. And finally, you'll need 5% acetic acid or vinegar. For CPAP application, you'll need a towel to help position the patient. You'll need suction to clear the airway, either elastic headband, cap, or hat to apply to the patient's head. You'll need four safety pins. You'll need the CPAP prongs, at least two rubber bands, and a lure lock to go on the CPAP prongs. First thing we're going to do is obtain a clean bottle. Apply the tape measure to the side of the bottle. The important thing is the zero is at the top and the seven is at the bottom. To secure the tape measure, I'll place a rubber band around the tape measure and bottle. I'm now going to take clean water and apply 7 centimeters of water into my clean water bottle. I now have 7 centimeters of clean water. I'll now take a bottle of vinegar or 5% acetic acid. I'm going to place one capful of this vinegar into my water. This makes the water bottle bacteriostatic and mycobacteriostatic. The next step is to place the expiratory tubing five centimeters into the water. I'll secure the tubing by using a rubber band around the tubing in the bottle. Ideally, the tubing is at five centimeters, but anywhere between four and six centimeters is acceptable. The next step is to prepare the CPAP machine. This is my CPAP machine. It requires electricity, so I will take my cord, power cord, and plug it into the back of the CPAP machine. I then plug my CPAP machine into my power source. The air supply tubing now plugs into the back of the CPAP machine. The air supply tubing is now applied using an oxygen adapter to the white adapter to the inspiratory tubing. I've now completed the five steps for CPAP setup. The next step is to prepare our patient. In this case, we have an infant. I'm going to position my infant so the airway is open by placing a small towel behind the shoulders. This allows the patient to have an open airway or in the sniffing position. For CPAP to work, it's important our patient has a clear airway. Thus, I'm going to use a suction catheter to gently remove any mucus or obstruction from each of the nares. This will ensure the patient has a clear airway and CPAP can be delivered efficiently. The next step is to either use a hat, a cap, or an elastic band to be able to secure the CPAP tubing. I'm going to carefully place the elastic bandage around the patient's head, careful that I avoid obstructing the eyes or the ears. The next step is to place two safety pins on each side of the patient's head. The safest position is going to be the halfway the distance between the eye and the ear. To ensure you don't stick the patient, insert one or two fingers between the patient's skin and the bandage. The first safety pin can go just lateral to the patient's eye. The second safety pin can be placed approximately one finger width breadth from the lateral to the first safety pin. Ensure the sharp point of the safety pin points up and away from the face.
We will now place another two safety pins on the patient's other side. The next step is to prepare our CPAP prongs. These are the CPAP prongs here. When the CPAP prongs come, there's an opening in the circuit. I will use a lure lock to close that circuit by placing the lure lock onto the right side of the CPAP prongs. The next step is to attach the tubing to the prongs. In this case, the inspiratory tubing is going to the left side of the prongs and the expiratory tubing to the patient's right side. Before placing the prongs, I'm going to turn my CPAP machine on by pressing the on-off button and monitor that the machine goes to 5 centimeters of water pressure. Now that the CPAP machine is on, I can apply CPAP to my patient. An important part of application is ensuring the prongs are inserted correctly. That is, the CPAP prong should go curved down. That is, the prong should go posterior inferior as anatomically correct. I have now placed CPAP on my patient, and the patient is receiving 5 centimeters of water pressure via CPAP. The, ne the next step is to cure, secure the CPAP prongs by using a rubber band. It will then be looped around the safety pins that I've placed on both sides. I've secured it on this side and I now secure it on the other side, also using a rubber band. If the patient is moving or squirming, you can have a parent or another healthcare provider help you hold the patient or hold the prongs in place while you secure them. I've now completed securing both sides of the tubing. I'll check my water bottle and make sure I see nice bubbles with my expiratory tubing at five centimeters. These are very adequate bubbles and ensure our circuit is closed and the patient is receiving five centimeters of CPAP. If I don't see any bubbles when my expiratory tubing is at five centimeters, I now need to look for a leak in the circuit. I'll begin by starting with my machine. Ensure the machine is turned on. I'm going to ensure the air supply tubing is secure. I'm going to follow the tubing all the way through. I'm going to check all my connections to ensure there are no leaks, holes, or gaps. I'm going to follow it back to the patient. A common source of a leak is that the prongs are not very well positioned. I've repositioned here. Also check to make sure my lure lock is in place. I'm going to follow the expiratory tubing all the way back to the bottle. Once I've done that, I want to make sure everything's in the right position. Once the circuit is closed, we should see bubbles at 5 centimeters of water. Once I see bubbles, I now have confirmation that my circuit is complete, closed, and I'm now delivering 5 centimeters of water pressure to my patient. While your patient's on CPAP and they develop an oxygen requirement, oxygen can be administered through the CPAP circuit. Whatever oxygen source you have available, whether it's an oxygen cylinder, an oxygen concentrator, or wall oxygen, plug the oxygen tubing to your oxygen source and turn the oxygen source on. You then connect your oxygen tubing to your oxygen adapter of the CPAP circuit. Your patient is now receiving oxygen through the CPAP circuit. We've now completed the demonstration of CPAP setup and application. You may use this video as a review, as a refresher, or to train other people how to apply CPAP. We sincerely hope this video and training course has allowed you to place CPAP on critically ill children. Thank you very much for your time and attention.